Hey guys, Woodles here. In this video, I am proud to announce the completion of the Wasabi Financial Center Complex, my largest LEGO skyscraper project ever. The concept of this project started when I finished the One Azure back in 2016. It was my first skyscraper and my largest project by far during that time. But after its completion, I was already thinking, how do I top this skyscraper project? Sure, I was cranking out skyscrapers every year after that, and I even did a few low rises. But it took six years for me to finally break ground. So March of 2022, I started laying down the foundation, and seven months later, I created the One Wasabi Financial Center, the tallest skyscraper in my layout. Now, I knew I wasn't done with this building, so I took a break, built a totally different skyscraper just to keep my sanity in check, I started building the next phase of this project in April 2024, and seven months later, I topped off the two Wasabi Financial Center, the second skyscraper in this complex. So this project has three major sections. You have, of course, the one Wasabi and the two Wasabi Financial Center, as well as the bridge, the small modular that connects the two. And for comparison purposes, I'm gonna lump the two Wasabi and the bridge together. So here are some stats for this project. The One Wasabi Financial Center sits on a 48 by 64 stud base plate, while the Two Wasabi Financial Center and the bridge combined sit on a 64 by 64 stud base plate. So combined, that's like seven standard base plates worth of square footage. The One Wasabi has 22 modules stacked on top of each other, and is standing at six feet and nine inches tall. By far the tallest skyscraper in my layout. The two wasabi with the bridge has one more module at 22 modules, but it's a little bit shorter at 17 modules tack high or just under five feet. That still makes it the third tallest skyscraper in my layout by highest occupied floor space. Also the one wasabi has 12 furnished modules, while the two wasabi and the bridge has 14 furnished modules. So the buildings in this project are also some of the most detailed I've ever done. As for piece counts, I don't have an exact number since I was making stuff up on the fly when building these things, especially on the interior. But a couple of years ago, I had pegged one wasabi to have 18,000 pieces and with nearly the same amount of modules and fully furnished floors. I have no reason to think that the two wasabi and the bridge wouldn't be around the same number as well. And this complex is truly a mixed-use development, with plenty of office spaces, a five-star hotel, plenty of retail and tourist attractions. So you can work, you can eat, you can drink, you can shop, you can swim, you can stay, you can relax, you can enjoy nature inside and out. And you can enjoy the great view of the Wasabi District layout. And I want to point out that this complex has lights. I use lighting systems from Light My Bricks, and I like them because I can fully customize the lighting configurations, which comes in handy in mocks like this. In this complex, I do have 10 battery packs lighting up more than three-fourths of all the modules. So in addition to these buildings being fully custom, I also had to think about the wiring involved during building. When you're talking 26 fully furnished modules, that is a lot of detail to cover. So in this video, I'm mainly gonna talk about One Wasabi Financial Center. All its modules, all its details. And I'm gonna do a part two video a few weeks from this video's release where I will detail the two Wasabi Financial Center and the bridge. So for now, let's start talking about the One Wasabi Financial Center. One thing that's obvious about this skyscraper is that it has four distinct floor plans. You have a base, a large floor plan, a medium floor plan, and a small floor plan. You'll hear me reference this throughout the video. We start off with a detailed overview of the first floor, which is the lobby. And as you can see, this is one massive module. This is 48 by 64 studs, which is about three standard base plates worth in terms of floor area. And just for comparison, this is the Juan Wasabi's ground floor next to the Swiss Chalet ground floor. Now the latter is more of a standard modular building size, so you get an idea of how massive One Wasabi is. And the height of this module is 19 studs high, which is the tallest ceiling I've done for any module. And it's actually because it's the height of two floors stacked on top of each other. 
And you saw that earlier when I had the bridge right next to it. And here you have the front facade. It's a mixture of mostly clear and clear blue bricks with plates with rails and some gray bricks. Just as a reference, I used over a thousand of these in the exterior facade and more than 2,000 of these one by two versions in this whole project. So yes, that's gonna be a recurring theme for the facade. And the sides are pretty simple. You just got tall, clear bricks here, simulate glass, and then these pillars here, that's gonna go all the way to the top. Of course, I like to use profile bricks like in here and in here to break up the monotony of the big wall of gray bricks. Going back to the front, we have two entrances here and in here. We're gonna look at this first one right here, which is a revolving door. It is a brick built revolving door, as you can see. The revolving door itself is seven wide, so it clearly fits within the eight wide door opening. Again, spinning it here, works flawlessly. And then you have a standard door here. That's a, more of a shortcut to the observation deck as you will see later. This is not really an entrance. It's more of a doorway to the building right next to it. And in the back you have this massive folding door over here, but it's not really for minifigs per se. It's just for an easier way to photograph the inside as you will see here. And now we're going to look at the interior of the lobby and the first thing you're going to notice is how massive and open the space is inside. The minifig is going to be greeted by the four bamboo here. It's the same construction as I had on the sidewalk. You have a representation of the skyscraper here done with gray and black plates. The floor is going to be high contrast black and white with some gray. And I would say the high contrast floors that you see here is going to be a constant theme throughout the entire project, both skyscrapers. To the right, you'll see the front desk here. I opted for curved individual desks for each front desk receptionist. And I have an elevator shaft here. In fact, I have two elevator shafts. I will explain why later. You have this structure bracing here and its sole purpose is to stabilize the curve on the front facade. Remember I told you about the front entrance here and that is a shortcut to the second lobby over the back and this is for the observation deck this whole back area and the idea of the observation deck is to be like a tourist attraction similar to what you would find on something like a world trade center or empire state building so yes you have the front reception here and then you have the entrance that goes all the way to the second elevator shaft and then the exit is back over here. You also have a replica of the Wan Wasabi over here, smaller scale. Again, high contrast flooring for both the entrance and the exit. And the idea is that this second elevator shaft will take you straight to the top modules. Well, this is for general use. So for many of the modular floors that we're gonna review, you're gonna see that this second elevator shaft is blocked off. I think we covered enough details on the ground floor, so we'll move on to the next module. Now we go to the second module of the Wan Wasabi, which is actually the third floor, because if you remember, the first module was two levels worth. But yeah, this is the food court section. I'm just gonna go quickly over the exterior, which is pretty much the same style as the first module. The front windows are a little bit more uninterrupted, but pretty much the same style. There are open doors here. Basically, that's gonna connect onto more food court stalls in the other buildings, which I will cover in a later video. This section here is actually open air. There's a small courtyard here. The bamboo style is similar to the ones on the floor below. But yes, the main focus of this floor is the food court. But more specifically, it's derived from the street food market set from the Friends line from a couple of years ago. That's right, these aren't actually 100% original creations. I appropriated it from that set. These two stalls are actually stalls in the original set, so I only had to modify it a little bit to fit. But this one came from a food truck, so I had to do a little bit more changes here. In fact, I still have the remnants of the food truck right here. But anyways, over here we have small kitchens as well. It's definitely tight back here, but you can see like a sink, like a cutting board a grill back here there's a bigger oven a smoothie maker over here so yeah it's a bit of a tight space but those are definitely custom made components on the back here there's a general type store with some fruits some drinks i'm thinking maybe custom jams here custom sauces things like that and then you have the main seating area here first off you have the bar style seating up front five seats and then you have the picnic style tables on fake grass with that green patch right there so yeah i'm trying to emulate 
outdoor seating with this types of seats. I only have one elevator shaft open here because like I said in the last module, this second elevator shaft will go all the way to the top floors. And lastly, this floor does have a battery pack. It's gonna power this floor, the floor below, and two floors above. So you have a single LED light strip that's gonna light up the first floor. You saw earlier there's a couple of LED strips here, here, and here. That's gonna light up this entire second floor. And then you have the wireless connector here that will connect to the third and fourth modules and it will light those up. So in the dark, it's kind of like a cozy nighttime feel in this food court. And that's intentional. All right, that just about covers the second module. Now we'll go to the third one. And here it is, the third module, the fourth floor, which is a bank. Actually, this is the first module that we're going to look at that is new for 2024. That's right, this is brand new. This interior was not here when I finished the one wasabi in 2022. I figured I really couldn't call this building a financial center if it didn't have a financial aspect like a bank. So here we are. There are two entry points in this module. You have this door over here, which will connect to the bridge. And then also by elevator shaft over here. Looking at the outside hallway first, where you have kind of a wild color scheme here, the dark tan on white on brown. It looks retro in a funny kind of way. And that's in contrast to the inside, which has like dark gray, kind of a modern vibe. I think the contrast works. I have a dark blue couch here just to fill up the space. This module might be smaller than the base modules, but this is still pretty huge. So I had to fill the space somehow. And now we're in the inside of the bank. To the left, you will see an ATM here. There's a single comfy seat over here in white with a coffee table. And up front, you have the bank tellers. Some of you may recognize that the front desk is uh, almost a straight copy of the ones in the brick bank design. And I covered it in one of the progress videos. Hey, it's a good design, so I reused it. So if you go through here a little bit in the back, you have the bank vault here. Here's a little bit of a closer look. It's an original design. And please don't do bank runs here because there's nothing in the vault. In reality, I just didn't have enough time to gather bills, pieces, and gold bars and things like that. Maybe it's a little bit hard to see, but I do have a small printer copier over here with the lid up. I can close the copier like so. You have the shroud here, which covers all the wires for the LEDs. But actually, the only two lights on this floor is going to be these outside lights for the courtyard. And then there's one more LED light below. But the light for this building will be covered on the floor above, which we will go to once you climb up the stairs over here. And it's the second floor of the bank, which is an office. Again, like the previous module, this is a brand new interior for 2024. And I put this module on top of the previous module in this presentation because I got to show you a few things. First off, this park right here. So there's actually a little bit of cantilever action going on here. And there's actually a small LED here under the roof that will light up the courtyard below. And the middle part is actually open here in the floor below. So you can actually see a little bit of the bank front desk right there. Again, there's two ways to access this floor. One of them is the stairs like we talked about in the last module. And the other is the elevator shaft that goes through here. And you have two double doors. Through the double doors, there's like a lounge area here with dark blue chairs. A couple of plant displays, one here, the other on the wall. And then towards the back, there's a hallway here with some displays like a flower vase, some cabinets, some books. Towards the back of this module, you have the main office here. This guy has a pretty big desk, the iMac, some bookshelves, and you have two seats here. So I figured this is the type of office where you would come in and apply and negotiate loans, that kind of stuff. There's another printer here, similar to the one on the first floor. And then the lighting situation, like I pointed out earlier, there was a bit light down here. It's actually connected in a series. So that light goes underneath here that will light up the floor below and then it connects up to here this is actually an led strip underneath and then that connects back to the wireless connector which should connect to the counterpart on the bottom floor you can see it a little bit with these modified plates here and this round bricks over here where i route the wiring so yeah lots of lighting here but that's the first office and here are the first four modules stacked up i put them together for you guys because they're all connected by a single power source for the lights and here it is under the lights as you can see all four floors lit up quite well the additions of the bank interiors on the third and the fourth module really made a big difference as well as that light on the cantilever right here 
lighting up the courtyard quite well. All in all, I'm quite happy with the modules that I've added. So now we're going to move on to the next section. We're actually going to skip a few floors because there's some unfurnished ones here. But now we start to look at the hotel section of the skyscraper. I would say there are four furnished modules here, two of them brand new. And the first such module is here, the hotel lobby. For those of you keeping score, this is the seventh module or the eighth floor. And this is actually a pretty important floor because it's a transition floor. A transition from the larger floor plan to the medium sized floor plan. And it wasn't like this in 2022. Two years ago, this module was actually built in a regular medium floor plan. And one of the updates for this video was I had to transfer this interior from the medium floor plan to the transition floor. As you can see from the images, this is the work in progress pics. I moved the hotel lobby because I wanted to take advantage of this thin balcony here. Specifically, I put a string here with LED lights, 10 LED in fact. So this is gonna be one of the three brightest floors in the building, the other two being the other transition floor and the rooftop. And one more thing, the transition floors are marked with trans clear windows instead of to the usual trans blue. Now moving on to the interior, again I'm on it with a high contrast black and white flooring with some blue accents. The desk also has high contrast black and white. For those keeping score, that's the third front desk I've covered in the skyscraper so far. And then the back wall which has some black and brown stripes with some clear pieces in some of the spaces. I think it gives it a modern vibe, definitely. There's a big dark red L-shaped couch here with two lamp posts. Again, I try to make it as modern looking as possible. And then you have a bar over here. I mentioned this during the video updates, but I added this part over here with the wine glasses. And I did a couple more specific bottles. You can probably see two Jack Daniels and two Johnny Walkers in this picture right here. There's the door that leads to the thin balcony. You have a small bench here. And then in the back, there's a small office here, probably for the manager. And then there's another door here that leads to another room, which currently has no specified purpose. So it's probably just like a storage room for now. Anyways, we're done with this module. Now we'll move on to the next floor. And here it is, the eighth module or the ninth floor. It's a hotel room and it's a pretty big room. It's like a presidential suite. First off to get here, you have to get through the elevator landing and then through the front door. And like I mentioned earlier, my preference for this project is to have more open spaces than cramming as much stuff as possible. So as you can see, this hotel room is pretty spacious. I was playing around with some unique color schemes. So I came up with a dark green and dark tan stripe combo for the floors. And I think it's really striking. You have a small kitchen area right here with a sink, some cabinets, it probably contains glassware. This bed is actually an eight wide frame with a seven wide mattress, so it's pretty huge. The headboard is actually attached to the wall. You got two nightstands. Right next to the bed, I have a couple of chairs. I used some arch pieces to make it look unique. Facing the bed, there's a massive widescreen television set and really just a great view all around with a panoramic view right here. Go through the double doors here. You have the bathroom, which is complete. It has two sinks, massive mirror, a toilet, of course. You have racks here with folded towels. There's a nice shower here and a massive bathtub over here. And like the bedroom, it has great views. One thing to note is that there is a battery pack here. The switch is accessible through this small door. I can easily reach the switch. And then you have these round bricks here, here, and here. That's actually hiding the wiring. And the main lighting from this module comes from the two bit lights hidden here and here. Here are the previous two furnished floors stacked up with another unfinished module because that one's also going to have lights. Gonna power up the lights. And here we are. As you can see, the transition floor with the 10 LEDs is super bright. And that is by design. And the bedroom is not so bright. Also by design. Maybe. I'm okay with leaving it as it is. It's kind of dimmed out a little bit. But if I change my mind later, I could surely add another LED to it. All right, that is it for these modules. Again, we're gonna skip a couple of floors to get to brand new modules, which are up next. It's a swimming pool and a cafe. And these floors actually pair up quite well. First off, we're going to look at the 12 module or the 13th floor or floor 12B if you're the superstitious type. 
As you can see, this is a dedicated swimming pool floor. But there's a couple of things that are interesting about it. This is the floor where the skyscraper transitions to the medium floor plan to the small floor plan, as you can see here. Just like the previous transition floor that I showed you, it has trans clear windows instead of the trans light blue. And also it has the same LED string as the previous transition floor. Again, 10 LED lights, super bright. One of the three brightest modules in the skyscraper. To start off the interior, you have the elevator landing here with wood tiles. And to the right of the elevator, you have a rack here with some white jumper plates. Those are supposed to be towels. There's a door here that leads to a small room. Again, it's too small to be of any use, so let's just say it's another storage area. But there's a couple of wires running through it, so it's just a way to hide those wires. And here in the main area, you enter through the double doors. You have a pretty big open space with, again, high contrast black and white checkered flooring. I think it stands out. I really like the use of the round profile bricks here as pillars. They make the pool area look like a Roman bath. You got two sun loungers here, two plants to liven up the scenery, and of course the pool itself. Now this pool is not the highest pool in Wasabi District. That belongs to the ones in the High Terrace Tower Hotel. Nor is it the biggest, that title belongs to the one in one Azure. But it's still a luxurious swimming pool. You have the black and white checkers extending to the floor of the swimming pool, which is a nice touch. And like the other swimming pools I've designed, there is a way to put the minifigures inside the pool and post them as such. There's another set of double doors here. That leads to the small balcony all around, like in the previous transition floor. All right, that about covers this module. Now we're gonna move one floor up. And here we are on the 13th module or the 14th floor, which is a cafe. This was a little bit of a last minute addition. Originally, I wanted like showers and changing rooms for the swimming pool below. But I found these gold railings off of a pick a brick wall. So I decided to do something with it. And I felt like a cafe is a much better play than changing rooms. So here we are. Once the minifig enters from the elevator, they will be greeted to a balcony with a view of the swimming pool down below, which is a nice touch. Here's another view. So the swimming pool is actually going to have a lot of windows facing it. And you have a couple of chairs and tables on the sides. So they also have a good view of the swimming pool as well. But back to the cafe, this is where the minifigs will order. Over on this side, there's a selection of pastries right behind a windshield piece. And there are a couple of things here. There's like a refrigerator, a counter, coffee machine, little bottles for coffee flavorings. And then there are also three pillars here, which matches up to the pillars on the floor below. These floors are lit up, but the battery pack is in neither of these floors just because there's not enough space. So I put a battery pack on the floor above, which is an unfurnished floor. And this is the 15th floor, 14th module. You have the wireless connector over here matches up like so i also put the floor below because it's also going to have some lights let's check it out and here they are all lit up again the transition floor is going to be super bright as expected both the cafe and the pool are clearly visible from the outside as you can see here like i said earlier these are brand new interiors so this is a massive step up from two years ago and it gives my skyscraper a lot more detail in the middle sections now we're finally going to look at the topmost modules in this building. This section is where we're going to have the records. Highest bar, highest restaurant, highest observation deck. We can look at the next two furnished modules. And like the previous two furnished floors, they're kind of a package deal. But first, let's start to look at the 17th module or the 18th floor. We're getting up there, aren't we? This is a fancy bar, and it's the highest bar in my layout, narrowly beating the ones in one azure by just a few studs. Again, everything else in this top section is off the small floor plan layout. And this floor is unique because it's the first floor since the ground level actually that has the two elevator shafts open. That's right. It is also accessible to the ones who bought the tickets to the observation deck. So you have the second elevator shaft right here. Here's a closer look at the bar. You have a white shelf with some liquor in there. There's a couple of Jack Daniels in there. You got some wine glasses hanging from the wall. You got the taps for the draft beer. And I don't know if you can see it, but there is a footrest in the bar, which is kind of funny because the minifig's legs don't reach it. The floors are black and white checkered pattern. Like I said, the high contrast pattern continues all throughout the building. 
and in the back through this door you have an industrial style kitchen there's a massive grill over here stove top fryer sink there's a massive exhaust vent here industrial sized refrigerator and freezer over here and then over on the other side you have a prepping table and industrial sized ovens but even the cook has a good view so that's great so with that we can make our way up the stairs here and get to the 18th module or the 19th floor it's not a floor that i packed with a lot of detail of course this floor is the restaurant and this floor ended up being one of my simpler modules as you can see plenty of seats for the minifigs the wall has a pattern that I've used in several other projects such as the Vibe Hotel and again the one Azure. There is a single bathroom here with a toilet and a sink. Please don't confuse the two. And as you can see this also has a battery pack with a switch accessible through here. So this is just going to light up the two floors that you see here. And there you go. A single LED strip is enough to light up the bar floor rather well. And the two bit lights on the restaurant floor gives it a cozy feel. That is it for these two floors. And now we're going to visit the top floor accessible to the public. And that would be the 20th module or the 21st floor. And this is the observation deck. Like the last few floors that we reviewed, this is a small floor plan. One unique thing about it is that only the second elevator shaft is open. As you guys may recall, this floor has a dedicated entrance from the ground level. And just like the real life observation decks and skyscrapers in New York or Chicago, it forces the visitors to go around the entire perimeter. So when the minifigures enter from the elevator, they have to go to the left through this door, which takes you to the balcony. And apart from the second module terrace and the two transition floors, this is the only other outdoor viewing spot in the skyscraper. And it's a very high viewing spot. I mean, at this point, you're looking down on all the roofs of the skyscrapers, including the one Azurus. Moving back to in the interior, as you can see, there's a lot of open space here. There's a single bench here. That's going to overlook the two Wasabi Financial Center. Here you have a small gift shop with some drinks and some confectionaries. Small counter. This is one of the two gift shops that I have in this entire project. There's also a small rack here for collectibles. And in the back, there's a big green screen with a photographer. I see this in many skyscraper observation decks where they take a picture of you and they sell it to you with different backgrounds. Definitely a tourist trap in my opinion, but people like my mom love it, so I put it in here. Once the minifigure is done, they can exit through this door and back to the elevator. The elevator can make one stop to the restaurant bar floor and then straight back down to the ground level. At least that's how I imagine it. And finally, we are on the topmost module, the roof, the 21st module. And this is definitely one of the most insane modules I have ever done in my Lego career. Just because of the sheer amount of pieces that I used here. You got hundreds of profile bricks hundreds of clear pieces, hundreds of grill tiles, lots of sloped cheese graters, and also lots of standard bricks and slopes here to create the structure. And I wouldn't do it regularly, but it's pretty stable to lift it like this. Now in a closer look inside, you do have the two elevators open here, and you will see three HVAC units here. If you've been following me for a while now, you know I love building these things. In fact, building rooftop modules and skyscrapers is one of my favorite things to do. On the other side of those air conditioning units, you have a battery pack here. This is our fifth one. And there are lots of lights in this module and I'll show them to you. First, pay attention to the round bricks, except for the ones over here, the ones here, here, and here and also the round bricks here. They're all running wires. You have four LED strips here that emit a very bright blue and they're all connected in a series. And then you have these four red lights here. That's running a parallel connection. You have one more LED strip in the bottom of this module that will light up the observation deck. And all those wires are connected in this big expansion port that will eventually lead back to the battery pack. And for some reason, having the expansion port exposed like this is kind of cool. And here's the rooftop on top of the observation deck. We're going to turn on the lights. 
So there it is, a super bright blue. I like the way the blue light comes through from the trans clear bricks. And of course the red lights looking great. Definitely signifies the fact that this is a very tall object. And of course the one LED strip underneath is having no issues lighting up the observation deck. And that is it, we have covered all 12 detailed modules in the skyscraper. One more thing I want to point out with the one wasabi is that updating the lighting and adding four new fully lit modules really improved the look of the skyscraper. I mean here's a comparison of what it was before compared to what it is now because one wasabi was my first skyscraper with lights to be quite honest I really didn't know what I was doing back then. Just want to point that out now one wasabi looks as vibrant as the rest of them and I'm gonna save this with a part two video where I light up the entire wasabi district with these two skyscrapers. But I think these two with their brightly colored crowns is just gonna dominate the skyline. All right, that is the overview of the one wasabi financial center. Like I mentioned earlier, reviewing two skyscrapers in a single video is gonna be too much. So please look forward to the overview video of the two wasabi financial center and the bridge. I'll also cover the impact of these two skyscrapers on the Wasabi District as a whole. And if you have questions about this project, please ask. Put your questions in the comments and I will try to answer it in the second video. And if you haven't checked it out yet, I had weekly updates on the construction of particularly the two Wasabi Financial Center. Though I had a few construction updates on the one Wasabi as well. But please check out that playlist also. And that is it for this video. Again, thanks for supporting my channel, for buying the instructions, liking and commenting. Thank you for all that. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching guys. Peace.